Excused. All right, next we have public communications. Anybody wishing to speak on anything that's not on the consent calendar may come up. Please state your name and residence. You have three minutes. Seeing no interest in that, public communications is now closed. Moving on to the consent calendar. Mr. Chair, I make the motion to approve the action minutes from May 8th, 2019. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. All right. Next, um, I believe you guys are up. Yes. Uh, planning technician Melissa Chipris will be giving the uh, staff report. Uh, good evening, honorable chairs, commissioners, and members of the audience. Okay. Uh, so the request before you is a zone variance to allow deviation from certain development standards, including front, side, and rear setbacks for the construction of a two-story house located at 13018 Dalewood Street. Uh, so on March 27th, 2019, the planning division received the said zone variance application from Michael Blink. Uh, the project site is located in the RG Garden Multifamily Residential Zone. Uh, the site contains street frontage along Dalewood Street uh, with a lot area approx of approximately 1,720 square feet. Uh, the proposed development consists of a new two-story, 1,048-square-foot single-family residence. Uh, as you can see here, um, the site is currently vacant with overgrown vegetation and is being used for parking by nearby residents. Um, and before you here, we have the front view off of Dalewood, and then we also have a side view um, off of an alley where the applicant is proposing a new two-car garage. Uh, here we have the proposed site plan for the 1,048 square foot development. Uh, the RG zone requires a front yard setback of 15 feet, a side yard setback of 10 feet, and a rear yard setback of 10 feet as well. Uh, therefore, the applicant is requesting a zone variance from the front yard setback of 12 feet, uh, the side yard setback of 7 feet, and a rear yard setback of 5 feet. Uh, the new residence will consist of two stories at 22 feet in height. Uh, and the proposed and proposed landscaping along Dalewood Street will consist of a variety of ground cover, shrubs, and trees. Uh, so here we have the proposed first floor plan that will consist of a two-car garage, uh, a living room, and a powder room. Uh, while the second floor consists of a master bedroom, a bedroom, bathroom, bathroom, laundry, and a kitchen. So the proposed architecture is uh, contemporary in style uh, and it provides a variety of articulation and building services. So um, as you can see here, the south elevation um, will be where the main entrance is and the facade will include a variety of materials including uh, beige colored smooth stucco finish, uh, dark colored wood siding and recessed windows. Here on the north elevation, um, it'll continue the same beige colored smooth finish stucco. Uh, the west elevation actually abuts the alley um, that, again, will be utilized for the new two-car garage. Uh, the east elevation will also continue the dark-colored finished wood siding. Uh, so in conclusion, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt Resolution PC-1909, approving zone variance ZV-1901. Um, we actually do have the applicant, Michael Blank, here, um, along with his uh, architect. So if the Planning Commission has any further questions for them. All right. I just have one question. Um, the five feet and seven feet variance, is that from the property line or from the next residence? From the property line. All right. Thank right. you.
Are there any other questions by the commissioners? The uh, only concern that I had is just because of the image uh, that I'm looking at, uh, where it seems like the second floor overlaps over the sidewalk on Dalewood. Oh, you just changed it. Go back to the one you were at. Right here? One more. There we go, right there. Okay. Um, so the dotted line is actually the property line. So they're staying within their property line. So gotcha. it is, um, I believe, like a three-foot overhang, but they're still staying within the confines of their own property. So the trees that I'm seeing on the uh, on the sidewalk or close to the sidewalk, right? Mm, yeah, that's still their property. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. You good? Yep. All right, I guess we will open it to public. For anyone wishing to speak, they'll have three minutes to speak. Please state your name and residence. All right, seeing there's no interest, public communication is now closed. Is there a motion to pass? Um, before you, you do that, um, this one is unusual in the fact that you don't see single-family houses before your spot you very often. The only reason why you're, you're seeing a single-family home is because of the variances for a side yard setback, a rear yard setback, and a front yard setback. Um, and in order to approve this, you have to make the findings in your, that are in the staff report that this is unusual circumstances and that the size and shape of the lot are unusual not compare in comparison to the other rectangular shaped lots um that's just for your information thank you i had one uh, question before we move forward um was this one of the lots that were actually uh, bought out by caltrans prior to uh, the expansion of the freeway you know, good question i um probably refer to the applicant on this one Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Amir Tadros. I'm actually just a friend of Michael Blank, the applicant who's sitting right back there. But I can answer these questions. Um, so yes, this lot uh, was bought out by, Cal by, by Caltrans. There was a property on their slot um, up until 2011, I'm gonna say. It was a, about a 1,300 square foot lot. Um, so to answer that question, yes, it was bought out by Caltrans. They, um, they tore down the property, expanded the 10 freeway, and that's the remnant property that's left. And he's, Michael is just looking to rebuild what was once on this property. Um, and then to answer the other question that was asked earlier about are there any neighboring properties, the, actually the only neighboring property is the water plant. And the water plant um, has probably, I'm going to guess, about 50 to 70 feet before its actual structure. So this is not encroaching on, on them by any means at all. The other side is Dalewood. The other side is alley the other side is nothing so um, <laughs> I hope that answers everybody's questions right. Any other questions thank you no no more questions <laughs> excuse me sir before you leave the podium would you please spell your last name for the record last name is Tadros T-A-D-R-O-S all right um, thank I you I'll make have, the motion. I do have one, more, I have one more, oh, you got one one more, more question, question for staff. Um, just looking at it future wise, because I could see uh, other people proposing for the same land use uh, right ahead of that, if I'm not mistaken, right after the bridge is where we're talking, where I'm talking about. It's an odd shape, also, a piece of land, which is still. Um, Vacant. In the future, would it be? Would this variance also be uh, something that can be proposed for that land? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Depending on again, I, I'm not a. I don't know the specifics of that one parcel. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, depending on on what they propose, uh, it could be uh, the potential is is there to ask for a variance based on on the the side rear and front yard setbacks yeah and our goal as staff when reviewing these types of projects is to try to meet the the requirements uh, to the greatest extent possible and again uh still achieving um what they what the uh, applicant is proposing uh, for right. that lot but yes to answer your question yes okay my only concern with that is because i could already see 
in this particular uh, project that's being proposed, uh, I do see that the fencing is a brick wall, which is more of a comfort for me because that way I know whoever's living there as tenants are actually protected from the amount of traffic that we have going up and down Delwood. It's heavily trafficked. So especially people going to Kaiser, uh, exiting the freeway, it, it's highly, highly uh, density in that area. Yeah. Um, that was my only concern. Yeah. But definitely we, we look at, I mean, not only just looking at the architecture, but we also look at, site, you know, site design, access. Um, in my experience when dealing with these lots, especially off of a street like this, um, you definitely don't want access off of the the main street. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a perfect situation where it lends itself uh, to access off the alley instead of the street because it is dangerous. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, just to to let just to um, uh, let you know that we as staff uh, look at those things. Okay. Good. Appreciate that. And I would just like to say, if it, someone else comes up with the approval, it's. Um, how do you say you got to look at each one separately like this one isn't i don't have no problem with it because there's not another resident right next to it that can be upset about them building there it's just the water tower so right um you know with the room that they have i see no problem with this now if someone comes in the future and says well they got you know special treatment or you guys amended theirs we could bring up that you know this was a special situation where you know there there was nothing obstructing it it was next to a water tower there was no other residents that might be offended by it so yeah it's an exception that we're making yeah and that's that's why that's why i see no issues making. with that so are we ready to vote? Yeah. So, um, just want to make a make a comment. So, um, so naturally, I'm a, I'm a supporter of a, like you know privacy and people having their their um, privacy, especially in their own homes. Um, so, so um, actually, I have no problem with this project. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful um, home. Um, but I think we have to kind of look at it through the lens of. Um, what like is currently in place like we have uh, an empty lot like you mentioned it's um um heavily traveled and and putting something beautiful it'll um sh shine um like nicely on our city um so i, th I think it's a, a welcome addition to to our city definitely yeah i believe the way it looks now it might even encourage transients to go there so by beautifying it by putting uh this house there I believe it'll be good for Bono Park. Absolutely. So, so um, Mr. Chair, I make a motion um, to approve Resolution PC-1909. I'll second it. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3 to 0. And I believe now we have... Um, Office, is it officer's report? Staff has anything for us. Oh, does the staff have anything for us? Yes, just uh, just wanted to um, uh, let you know that we will have a planning commission uh, on June twelfth. Um, it'll we have a couple items there more than uh, what we we've been usually having, uh, so um, uh, I'm prepared. Um, we'll see you on the twelfth uh, for planning. Now, commission. I've I've heard that. There's three planning commission seats up for either renewal or to change. Um, do you know what date that's on? Um, it's be so the next council meeting. It looks like the last council meeting that was attended. They pushed it over to the June, uh, the first meeting in June. So potentially the council could make uh, recommendations at that meeting. Um, if not, they'll they'll push it to the next council meeting. Okay. Um, do you know what seats are up? Um, I believe it's, oh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, oh my God. Uh, there's three seats. I know, uh, there's Mario and, uh, Mario. I think it's Mario, Edith and myself. Right? Yes. Mario, Edith. And yes, I was like Edith. Um, but yeah. thank you for that. Um, there's three, 
Uh, and so far on the agenda, as it's indicated, there's two that have potentially uh, um, uh, that have applied to fill those three seats. So, you know, you could see the odds there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, thank you. I'm sorry. How many applicants did you say there? Two. There's two listed on the agenda. Um, and you can. You mean in addition to the one to the incumbents? Correct. Exactly. Yes. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Um, um, I want to take this moment to thank thank the staff because I think we're uh, actually seeing some improvement or going forward with the um, traffic uh, mitigation uh, on Vadillo and on Ramona from what I'm seeing. I already saw the strips down on the road. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> there's something happening. Yeah. So we're like I said, uh, that item is scheduled to come back on the 12th. Okay. And so uh, I know that Public Works is uh, is getting that that information for us. Good. I, I truly appreciate you guys doing your your due diligence and and coming through with that, um, especially right now where we still have school in session, right. and we could actually get some actual good figures to see what it is that we have in that area. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your service. In case I'm not here next meeting, <laughs> <laughs> I think your sa your seat is safe, man. You don't have nothing to worry about. It it's me that should be saying goodbye now. <laughs> All right. Next, we have a motion for adjournment. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make the motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's a beautiful.